Finding a stylized look for your game is hard, and I don't want you all to fall into the trap of resorting to Unity's default lighting. Fortunately, Unity has released the post-processing package to help us with this problem, and there are countless tutorials of how to install it in your project. But, there aren't as many which show the best post-processing combinations, so here are 18 of them to put in your Unity project. So the first one is the hazy effect. All you need is bloom, so I'm going to go add effect and add bloom. For this one, you need to get your threshold and turn it all the way down to zero. Get your diffusion, crank it all the way up to 10, and then increase your t intensity to a set amount, like three. And now if you go around your C, you can see that the scene is now pretty hazy. Next one is the doomsday effect. For this one, you need to crank your intensity like really high to begin with. Keep your diffusion at 10, and then increase your threshold until it gets not bright anymore so I'm going to set it to like 1.1 and then when you look up at the sky, you can see that it looks like the end of the world. So yeah, you could use that effect. Now this next one, I'll call adaptive dirt. So you need to set your intensity to something really low and get your threshold. I'm going to set to something like one and you don't need diffusion. And for this one, let's get our lens dirt. So I'm going to select the first one and then your intensity, just put it as something really high. So now what will happen is when I look at something that's not bright, it won't show. But when I look up at the sky, then the dirt will show. All right, so we're all done with blue. Now let's get into some funky tools. So for this one, I'll call chromatic dizziness. This one uses chromatic aberration and it basically pulsates this back and forth. So let's go into my tools and let's turn it on and you can kind of see what's happening. And by the way, all these tools you can get on GitHub in the description. You can increase the speed, you can increase the min intensity. So now if your character is hit by something, then it's kind of, you know, a bit dizzy. So that'd be a cool effect to put in. Before getting into the next one, I've made a bunch of small Unity tools that you can't get anywhere else. For example, creating quick map boundaries, wrapping meshes around other meshes, and generating PS2 style environments. If you would like to check them out, you can have a geezer on my Buy Me A Coffee page. Okay, on to the next one. Now this next one does not use post processing, but actually the field of view of your camera, and I'll call this one dynamic FOV. So this one's kind of nifty. I'm basically saying that when I zoom forward, I am going to change the FOV of the camera. And of course, this script you can get in the description as well. All right, so now look at this. When I move forward, the FOV of the camera changes. And if I like sprint in a way, then it changes really quickly. And if you have a look on the right side, you can see that the field of view is changing depending on how fast I'm going. So that's a really unique way to use your field of view. Now this next one I'll call adaptive depth of field. So let's add depth of field in. And of course you've got your focus distance and basically this focus distance changes depending on what you're looking at. So let's go into my main camera and turn on adaptive focus and let's click play. So it's going to full screen. And if I look at this letter box, everything else is fuzzy. But if I look outside, then everything else comes into focus. And and you can kind of imagine it sends raycast from the middle of the screen and depending on what it hits it changes the distance and if you want to copy my settings i have to set this to 5.6 and 50 you want to set that to low and of course you can increase the blur size so that it is a bit more dramatic all right now let's get into lens distortion the fun one so you can actually create camera shake just using lens distortion it's kind of cool so i've made a script called camera wobble and let's turn it on you can kind of see what's happening the x and the y is changing really quickly so let's get my intensity and crank it up a little bit and you can see i've got some sort of camera wobble of course it's really rigid right now so i'm going to go back into my tool and i'm going to turn up the rigidness and now we've got a really subtle camera wobble going on we can increase the frequency so now it doesn't do it as quickly and of course we can get the intensity and we can put it in the other direction and now we get something that's really really intense yeah so a bit of camera shake using lens distortion right there now the next one is how to do a drunk walk so i'm going to go to the rotational shift script and of course you can get this in the description i'm going to turn it on Let's get the speed point to zero for now. And now if I were to look around, you can see that the world kind of bends. I'm going to make this a little bit more dramatic by increasing the intensity of lens distortion. Now if I look, yeah, it's, it's really, really weird. So this is only changing when I look, but I can also make it change on its own by increasing the speed. So let's have a look. I'm going to increase the speed to like 5.5. Five, and now you can see it's changing on its own. Let's increase it a little bit more to like 30. And let's make that 125 different values. 
and now it is very hard to walk around. So if you want a cool drunk effect, then this one is a pretty fun one to put in. You can see it's just changing the center X and the center Y over time, and it's linking to the rotation of the camera. So this one fixes a really big hole in Unity's post-processing. If I go to motion blur, uh, you can't actually increase it that much. So I'm gonna go to tools and let's click play. I'm gonna turn on mega blur. This basically makes insane motion blur and just increases the value to insane amounts. Now this next one is a bit like changing the FOV as the previous one, but instead it uses lens distortion and changes the intensity of how fast you are moving. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to enable all of these. And now when I move, you can see that the lens gets distorted whenever I move forward. And if I go really fast, or then it becomes really distorted. And of course what you can do is you can change the FOV of the camera and also lens distortion to create a really, really weird effect. So this is it with both enabled. Oh gosh, you go really quickly. Look at this, I'm all the way over here, I move forward a little bit, and then I move forward a lot, and it looks like I'm going really quick. All right, now let's get into vignettes. So I'm gonna go add effect, and let's add a vignette. Now a lot of people don't know how to do a proper vignette, so this is my go-to. I get my smoothness, bring it all the way up, and basically put it to round about there. And now it's a really subtle vignette, but it makes a big difference. So now this next one, I'm going to use the vignette to create some sort of finder game. Right, so you can kind of see how this works. When I move my mouse, it gets bigger and then it shrinks. Of course, we can treat some settings here. Let's make it not smooth and I'm going to make it rounded. So now we've got a circle that's trying to find things on the screen. Now, of course, you can see how it's doing it. It's changing the center depending on where my mouse is on the screen. And then the other cool one is you get roundness and you bring it all the way down and now you've got the square and you're trying to find things with the square. Of course there's a few things you can change, you can change the min intensity so that it doesn't become as big. You can like decrease the rigidness so it becomes a lot smoother when moving to different places. And you've got sensitivity, if I put that down by one I now have to move my mouse a lot faster for it to expand. Yes, yeah, so that makes for a pretty cool finder game. All right, this next one uses auto exposure to create some cool transitions. So I'm gonna turn on auto exposure fade. So I've just made some simple events here. When I click this one, it will fade to white and then you can make it fade to black as well. And then you can make it go back to default. Now, of course, you can change the speed, like the fade to black was pretty slow. So let's make it a bit quicker and then you can make it fade to white. And let's make the white value a little bit higher. I'm gonna make it go to 40 now and let's make it fade to white again and now it basically covers the entire screen. Yeah so that's how you make some neat transition effects with auto exposure. Now save the best to last because we are going to look into color grading. Now the very first thing I'll touch on is when you're color grading, tone mapping is a very easy way to just make your scene a lot better. Um, ACS or neutral, ACS is normally better, that's a more cinematic look. Then of course you can go to custom if you want to do your own custom tone mapper and you can tweak these settings to make it how you want. But this next one is probably one of the best ones in the list. This is how you can do tune shading with color grading and with bloom. So you've got to use both of these. So how it's going to work is we're going to decrease the light with the color shading and we're going to increase the light with bloom. All right, so first of all, let's get our post exposure and we're going to decrease this number. I'm going to put it to like minus 10, basically black. Now threshold, you kind of want to keep it one, I found is best. And then with diffusion, you want to bring that all the way down. And your intensity, bring up to a really high number, like a thousand. And just like that, we have created a tune shader on the environment. And the neat thing is you can change the color as well. So let's change the color of the bloom to like red. And now everything in the entire scene is red, but only the bright bits. Then of course, if you get your threshold, Threshold, you can change to what light level will be affected by this tune shader. So if I put it all the way down to like 0.6, you can see that most things are red unless they are shadows and then they become all black. And of course, if you want to make it a little bit more blurry, get your diffusion and then increase that number and everything will kind of blur into each other. Now you're getting a more like pixelated look on your world. And then the very last thing that you can change is your softening. If you change this up a bit, then you can make it more intense. If you bring it down, then it becomes more black. 
as well. So you've got that slider to deal with as well. But yeah, you can make some pretty cool effects with this. So now let's make the dream effect. It's kind of similar to Hazy, except we're going to use color grading as well as bloom. So for this one, get your saturation, crank it all the way up to 100 and get your contrast and also crank it all the way up. And already it looks like a really dreamy world. And now for this one, keep your threshold all the way down at zero and then your intensity, bring it down to something like two and then get your diffusion and then crank that number all the way up. Now, as you walk around, you can see I've got the hazy look over the top of the saturation and contrast to make it look really dreamy. And the alternative is to get your diffusion, crank it all the way down and then get your intensity and then crank it up high. And now you get a more brighter look. And now this one gives you a more cartoony look on your world. If you want to see the difference, before, after, before, after, a massive difference. Now the very last thing I'll touch on, I've deleted Bloom, is grading curves. The two best ones to use is hue versus saturation and luminance versus saturation. But here's the reason why I've made this little effect here. What I've done is everything is unsaturated except for the sky color. Of course, I can narrow this down a little bit more. There we go. So now it's literally just the sky. Or we could make it so the ground is the only thing that has any color. So now everything else is black and white except for the ground. And the last one is luminance versus saturation. For this, I'm going to add in a point light. And let's increase the intensity so it's kind of bright. So now what I've done with the graph is everything that's really bright actually has saturation but everything that is not bright it will just be gray so we can get this point light and then we can move it around and it changes what is gray and in which one is saturated all right that's all the ones i have you can get all the scripts down in the description on github if you'd like to use them